Get ready for major shifts this week for clarity, for new directions, because a lot is happening. We've got a lot of events going on this week. So stay tuned, come join me and find out what is going on and how you can use this energy to the best of your ability and for your own journey. Welcome everyone to this weekly energy reading for the week of March 20th through 26th. I'm Christine, I'm an intuitive spiritual coach, consultant, energy healer, and a lot more. <laughs> if this is your first time here, comment down below, introduce yourself. I love getting to know everyone here. I love also hearing from your experiences, your wisdom. I believe in this journey that we call life. We can all learn from one another, no matter how old you are, no matter where you live, what your perspective, doesn't matter. There's, There are always little nuggets and big nuggets that we can all learn from and exchange. And if you're returning, it is wonderful to see you back. Give me an update below. It's been a while. And I also want to add a personal update on my own. Very, I'm gonna keep it short. I know I have not been consistent with my own videos and work. I did not anticipate the massive changes that I have been going through on my end on so many levels. So I want to take the time to appreciate all of you and to say that I appreciate you because I think I said that wrong. <laughs> I really appreciate you all for your support, for your patience, for your kindness, for your love, for your emails, for your messages, for your likes, for helping me in this community and also for being a part of this community because I wouldn't exist without you all. <laughs> and my goal here again is to help people, especially on their spiritual journeys, but more importantly, to learn how to trust themselves among many other things. So. With that said, more updates coming. Thank you guys. Let's dive into the astro cap for this week. Shit ton happening. I, I feel like many of you may have woken up. I, I feel many of you felt this uh, in the days leading up to this week, but you may have woken up and felt like someone turned the light on, like put a switch and you're like, what the F? Why is there so much fluorescent light here when I had ambient lighting? It's that type of uh, sudden shift where you're like, am I dreaming? Am I in a twilight zone? Today, Monday, March 20th, we have the sun entering Aries in about two hours where I'm at, 524 Eastern Standard Time, New York City time for reference. For many of you that are watching, especially if you are on the other side of the ocean, this has already happened for you. Uh, I'll say heading towards um, Europe, Asia, and I guess it depends on the perspective too, because you could head either direction. We also have the spring equinox occurring at the same time, so again, Aries is a fire sign, a cardinal sign. It is about ambition going forward, very direct. I would also say Aries is also very simple. Not simple-minded, but in terms of simplicity. Aries removes the fluff and it just goes ahead. Forget the planning, we'll learn along the way. There's a lot of enthusiasm, um, spontaneity, excitement, adventure, trying things that are different or new or simply elevating yourself in a new perspective a new way there could also be a time because this is like a reset right we are starting the new astrological year think about this like the new year so many people denote january 1st with the gregorian calendar which again because of the energies involved it's very different you may be feeling now the impetus to start everything you wanted to maybe officially start in january you may be feeling a renewed sense of vigor of, you know what, I actually got this shit. The three months leading up to this, they were practice. They were allowing me to wrap up things and that's exactly what this energy is uh, showing us. And I think it's important no matter where you are, because I'm in the same boat. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things that I probably took on, things I should have said no, whatever. It's all about having grace, compassion for ourselves and realizing we can press the zero button at any time. So this beautiful energy allows us to expand those boundaries with, with ourselves and ask ourselves, you know what, where can I be more courageous in my life? Where, I, where can I show up more for my life? And I know Mercury went into Aries recently and I feel like I'm talking a mile a minute and I really usually don't. If you look at my previous videos, I'm usually a snail talker. And so I'm feeling the energy too. And I'm just like, whew, calm down. But this is a time to use that excitement. Doesn't mean big. Most people think, oh shit, I have to change my life or do something really dramatic or huge. Sometimes the biggest changes in our life are small. You know, maybe it's starting to say no. Most people don't glamorize that on Instagram. Oh, look guys, I said no. So utilize this energy in a way that's going to help uplift you. And I wanna say, 
uh, I'm going to attach a video somewhere somehow when I figure it out. Otherwise, it'll be linked in the description box or in the comment uh, area below about the spring equinox and ways you can celebrate and learn more about that. But use this energy to go inward, which again, depending, everyone has different ways to celebrate the equinox. But today, later on, and even during the week, find some time for stillness. And this will allow you to get clear with yourself, but also receive the answers. And I'll have another video on that. I'm finding clarity. Um, I'll post it later this week. And so again, um, this is a really great time to ask yourself, what am I ready to change? What am I ready to start? What am I ready to do differently? Tuesday, March 21st at 5.26 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York City time for reference. We have Jupiter in Aries, semi-squaring Saturn in Pisces. And so Aries at this point is at about the 16 degree mark and Pisces, Saturn and Pisces, it just ingressed into this very recently on the 7th of March. So it's still around the zero, between the zero and one degree because it's it moves pretty slow here. So again, with this aspect happening this week and continuing onward, we may be feeling a drive to go 110%. With Jupiter, it's you know magnifying things, expansion, wanting to go all out. But more importantly, with Saturn, anytime we see Saturn involved, it's asking us for a reality check and it's almost like a, a pause, like, wait a minute. Do you really have all the frameworks, the guidelines, the steps, or perhaps a more realistic or prudent approach here before going all in and skipping certain things? And so make sure that you do have some type of structure that's involved because again, with Saturn and Pisces, it's not, they can seem like contrary energies, you know, but at the same time, it's also about tapping in to the unknown elements. So your spiritual and creative aspects, a lot of that is nurtured and comes from the same channels. So pay attention to what you're receiving, what you're feeling, because that is going to help inform some of the action steps that many people, the energy, the drive that they are wanting to expand in their lives and in their in, in the areas uh, in general, more at a macro level. On oh, same day, guys. On Tuesday, I'm looking at my notes and I'm like, did I mix myself up? On Tuesday, the 21st at 1 23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the new moon occurring. So again, a lot of freshness, a lot of clean slates, a lot of reset. And this new moon in Aries, this is a special one because at the end of the month, we have another new moon with the eclipse, right? That'll spark the first eclipse for this 2023 year. So again, there's clarity coming. I did a separate video about this. It's usually when there's a lot of chaos around us, a lot of external noise, as I call it, whether people, um, busyness, overwhelm in, in the mind, whatever is happening, it's difficult to find clarity, to find the answers, to listen to ourselves. And when we separate ourselves from that, we start realizing, wait a minute, I'm hearing things. I'm, I'm actually noticing, I'm, I'm receiving answers and guidance. And it's when we go within ourselves and find that stillness, that we start getting the messages because our soul is quiet and it's listening and it's waiting for us to listen to these messages. And so I've put here a lot of metaphors. The sun is finally rising, but for those of you where you may feel like the curtain is still very heavy, almost like velvet, or you're like, wait, I'm peeking through the curtain. I don't see any answers. I don't see any guidance. I don't see any clarity. What's going on? It's coming, you guys. Everyone is on different timelines. Everyone, depending again on so many variables, you are operating in different ways and receiving guidance in different ways. So don't be alarmed. Don't think you're falling behind or you're being left out. You're not. Use the energy as building momentum. If you do not have a plan yet or you, you're like, I have no fucking idea where I'm going. That's okay. Breathe. Breathe. You will. Just take some time to get clear with that, with what your objectives are, where your goals are, where you do want to go in your life. And it's really easy, I wanna say this, it's really easy to get overwhelmed because so many people have like 20 life areas and then 20 goals and I'm like, what the hell? That's overwhelming for me. If, if it works for you, more power to you and do it. But if you are starting out and you're just overwhelmed at the thought of even making a plan, think of just what would have the biggest impact right now in your life. Maybe that's taking out your garbage and cleaning up your space. Or maybe it's making a meal, grilled cheese with a smoothie, who knows? But think about something in your life that would have the biggest impact. I know for me, it's it's sleep and really getting structured. 
this has been my goal, I would say for the last 20 years, more, <laughs> really structuring on sleep. So think about something right now in your life that you would like to set an intention for with this new moon. Uh, what is it that you would like to invite change or you would like to initiate? It could be something small. Think of, again, if it's sleep, for example, because that's for me. Maybe you want to create something more consistent. What would be the first step? Maybe setting an alarm to give you a clue like, hey, it's, it's time to start you know, doing your bedtime routine or your winding down routine. And that'll help get the momentum forward. We don't change overnight. And again, I'm, I feel like I'm going off on another tangent about goals. So I just want to say that because with all of this Aries energy, I feel like, again, because I'm also speaking fast, which is not the norm for me, but I can feel myself wanting to do a lot. And one of the, um, I would say, adverse side effects of this energy would be burnout, overwhelming ourselves with too much, overcommitting, because Aries is amazing. It's a cardinal sign that's great at starting something new alongside the others, like Capricorn, Cancer, and Libra. But we have to make sure we have that energy to sustain all of, all of these commitments we are saying yes to. So be cautious about that. Also, I wanna say, as we dive into this Aries season, we are also getting a glimpse of what the nodal shifts because then the lunar nodes will be shifting in mid-July and we are getting a lot of this energy, almost like a preview of what's to come because the, sh the nodes are shifting from Taurus Scorpio to Aries Libra. So it's all going to be focused on the self and maintaining and preserving in in that integrity, not just within ourselves and who we are, but also in relationships in particular because of the access being highlighted. So pay attention to that. Okay, Wednesday, March 22nd at 11.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York City time for reference. I should just say that at the beginning. We have Ceres, the dwarf uh, planet or asteroid. Some call it the planetoid. I thought that was a cute name. I've never heard that, <laughs> like a mix. It's going retrograde. Well, it's been in retrograde, but it's retrograde and it'll be entering Virgo until May 6th. And so again, Ceres rules over nourishment, how we nurture ourselves and others, how we support ourselves and others, unconditional love, and also um, how we take care of our physical bodies, but also our mental bodies as well. Some say this is a uh, body that's ruled by Taurus. So think of Taurus themes. We have material uh, assets and goods and wealth, financial wealth, our own personal wealth, our esteem, our value system, our worth. And also our physical body. So the, again, with any any time you hear retrograde, it's really simply denoting, okay, what do we need to revise, review, look over, update, so that we can consolidate a better plan in terms of where we are in this season of our life. And going forward, that'll enhance the journey that we are not now initiating or starting or even updating in some way. And so again, because Virgo theme, we just had this last lunation, this full moon in Virgo was all about... Uh, the physical body, right? It's about our wellness, our mental health as well, uh, service and work and animals. So these themes may come up, but it, particularly when it comes to self and with this retrograde happening, uh, it's also turning us inwards. Retrogrades uh, ask us to look within ourselves to introspect. Something too with this retrograde you may be seeing, is particularly with your relationships, you may be seeing where the cracks are because it's allowing you to go inward and so you may be creating more space with other folks in your own life. You may be seeing or sensing, wow, I didn't realize maybe there's a lot of people pleasing elements here or there, are not, there aren't any boundaries here. I'm taking on other people's nurturing and support to a degree that I shouldn't. Maybe there's codependency being highlighted or you're seeing elements of abuse, toxicity or some type of addiction coming up. So pay attention because I feel like this is going to really highlight what needs to be uh, enhanced, worked on, or improved upon, or what do I need to cut out and leave? Thursday, March 23rd, 8.23 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. New York City time for reference, y'all. <laughs> we have Pluto going into Aquarius. Big shift because Pluto has been in Capricorn for the last 15 years since 2008. I'm sure many of you have stories, share them below. I feel like, again, just simply because of time, compa time capacity, or capacity in general. I haven't been able to do extensive videos on each. And this requires 
its own and there's so much amazing material out there already. But with this shift, uh, this is that giving us a preview because Pluto will be dancing back and forth between Aquarius and Capricorn. Um, actually, it'll be retrograding in Capricorn and staying until about 2024 when it finally shifts into Aquarius. So we are going to see a little preview of what this looks like in our own lives because it'll affect everyone's uh, life differently depending on where it's transiting, right? In, in your natal chart, what, which, which house it's um, going to enter. And so again, uh, there's going to be, and I, I, it's almost like you can't really say what's going to happen in just this short time because Pluto is slow moving and so we see the effects longer term. Uh, but there's going to be going to be a lot of transformation because Pluto is the, the planet and it embodies the energy of death, transformation, rebirth, change, growth. And realizing what the Aquarius energy focuses on social norms, visions, groups, humanitarian ideas or ideals as well. And also what it means for you, how you relate to that, to social groups, your social group, but in general, uh, social constructs and there's more to unpack here but this is simply a preview of, of what's to come finally Saturday on the 25th of March at 7 45 a.m. Mars is finally getting out of fucking Gemini and it's ingressing cancer you guys some of you may have felt this uh, again depending on where Mars was in your um, natal chart or passing through but it has been in the sign of Gemini for seven months and it's a mutable air sign. And it, I'll just say it's, I felt like it's been, the, it's been like a mental clusterfuck. That's the best way I can describe it. It's been a lot of like indecisiveness, a lot of back and forth energy, uncertainty, burning out up here more so. So I feel like this is going to offer an amazing reprieve simply because Mars is moving on. But in Cancer, this is not an optimal, uh, position or sign, I should say, simply because uh, it's exalted in Capricorn, which is a polar sign. So its fall is in Cancer. So simply put, it doesn't do, you know, extraordinarily well, but it is what it is. And so it's going to allow us to also see how we can continue to tap into our intuition during this time to inform our decisions, to inform how we also communicate and also to look more towards the inside and to tap into the feelings because cancer again it's ruled by the moon so there's a lot of shifting energies that go alongside with with our moods that change the moon changes signs and in, in, in about every two to three days so again there could be a lot of um emotional i would say emotional uh, uh, chaos perhaps but that's a little bit seems strong so pay attention to how you feel uh you may be seeing passive aggressiveness, you may be seeing um, some forms of manipulation come up, people taking things the wrong way because of the higher emotional influxes. And also you may be experiencing a higher degrees of sensitivity, like being offended because someone said something and taking it the wrong way. So just be cautious during this time. Holy crap, you guys, this is it for the week. <laughs> Almost 20 minutes in, we are going to dive in. I'm go I want to tap into what this week's energy is bringing us. There is a lot happening, and each of these points that I mentioned deserves its own video. And so, simply put, this week, we are seeing the curtains open. We are sensing a shift, and many of you are going to feel that innately. You may be already dropping, almost like, again, when you're sweeping up dust or the stuff from the floor in a dustpan. This is the time when you're, when you're walking to the garbage can and you're going to release it into the garbage can. In other words, you are going to be closing chapters, releasing anything, closing the doors and going forward. Because if I could denote a picture to relate to Aries, it's simply closing the door when you leave a room and walking ahead and never looking back. That's the best way to put it. And looking forward with that innocence, because again, Aries energy is at the start of the astrological zodiac wheel and there's an i wouldn't say a, a naive a naiveness to aries but there's an innocent uh fun loving energy you know of a child getting ice cream it's that exuberant 
excitement, I feel. And uh, this is going to help revamp many of you, help propel you forward. Okay, with that, I'm gonna be quiet. Let's see what the universe has in store. What do we need to know for this week? And I am plucking. I'm not going to let the cards fall just to keep the short, guys. <laughs> when I say pluck, I spread the, <laughs> the cards. Bottom of the deck, we have King of Cups. This perfectly perhaps summarizes leaving Pisces season. Many of us are in our fields and are ready. Okay, we have Page of Cups, Water Energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Nine of Pentacles, Earth Energy, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, King of Swords, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. Many of you, I feel like, have been in this state. It, to me, this almost represents wishful thinking, but it's almost like scatterbrain thinking. What do we want to really commit to? Because, uh, again, with the Page of Cups, sometimes there could be a little bit of, I wouldn't say not going all in, but you may be thinking, sorry guys for that. We may be thinking, okay, I'm ready to emotionally and fully commit to this part of my life, you know, to finally take that chance and to leap forward. But there may still be a, there may still be an energy within you where you're like, is this really what I want to do? Or is this 100% the way I should go? But you are going to start seeing growth because the more you commit to it, again, it's all about tapping into your heart and your emotions and making sure there's that connection. Because when we do anything in our life, whenever we have a goal and it's not really connected to our values or to our emotional self or even to our soul. It's not soul driven. That's why a lot of folks will say it's not in alignment. It's not soul, heart centered alignment, all of that. So check in with yourself this week and ask yourself, are these goals? Is what I'm wanting to do? Is this really me or is this someone else? This is also a perfect embodiment of the Aries energy because Aries is all about the self, rules the first house. So this is really asking you to get clear. It doesn't matter what's in your life. Do I really want to continue taking those watercolor classes? Maybe you're being called to do something different. Am I ready to leave this relationship? Yes, maybe you want more peace and less drama. Whatever it is, ask yourself. Because once you do, I feel like you are going to receive so much uh, I'm getting intuitive inspiration. You're start once you get clarity on what you want. It's almost like the universe is going to be there behind you to back you up. And there's going to be a lot of fast forward growth and momentum. Again, with the nine of pentacles here, this is building, this is growing, learning. I feel like you're gonna go straight forward. And the energy here though is one of higher development, uh, an ability to master your own trust, to master your own sense of being, to master your own sense of, yes, this is actually what I feel. Maybe it doesn't align to what other people think I should do or what society says or what I thought I was gonna do, maybe in this season of my life, but I'm feeling called. So pay attention to these nudges because a lot of us are going to be doing things that are very different than what we imagined. And that's where the beauty, the sun comes out. That's where you're going to see, you see the smiling, face here it's like oh yeah no shit I should have done this a long time ago and here this dude looks confused like uh I'm not really sure so this week pan out that's why I say sometimes yeah we have a new moon coming up and it's a great way it's a dark mood it's, it's a time to release as well not so much to initiate in terms of physical action but to set those intentions so get clear this week and ask yourself take again time for stillness Take time, I would definitely say, to meditate and listen to what you're being called to. Ask for signs. This is the best thing. If you are wanting to go back to school, for example, using a simple example here, if you're wanting to go back to school, you can say, you know what? I feel like I'm being called to go back to school. Universe or whomever you work with, your spiritual team, please show me the sign of maybe a pamphlet with the school's name that you're going to, whatever it is that... This is the right path for me. You're going to be amazed at what you see. Pay attention. And again, with the King of Swords, there's a seriousness here. I feel like many of you are getting ready to 
I'm hearing like get to work. Not that I'm saying you guys weren't working or you were lazy or obstinate in some way, none of that. But I feel there's a serious tone here of really going after your life, your life's desire. I keep hearing desire and destiny, going after what you truly want. And sometimes I get this overwhelming sense of energy because I know for me, I, I've, whenever I've encountered anyone with strong Aries energy, especially sun, but again, it'll depend on, on other placements. There's this innate fear, fearlessness that I feel from them. And they just go, just walk. Meanwhile, I like take time to marinate and think. And so we're being balanced here. There's like a counterbalance here. It's okay if you feel a little bit of uncertainty or fear. It's, 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 uh, it's completely okay. And it's okay to go in, at your own pace. Because when you listen to yourself, that's the feeling part and tapping into those emotions and not completely detached. Because again, with this energy here, there's a sense of detachment. Stay tuned and stay in tuned to your personal emotions and to the sensations that you're getting and that you're feeling because they're going to help guide you. At the same time, <laughs> this is the balance part, you guys. Do not allow... The fears that are coming out because sometimes when we're starting something new or we're wanting to make a change whether it's putting in a letter of resignation or starting a new job or leaving certain relationships whatever it is there's a tinge of what if this is not the right choice what if I'm making the right the wrong decision and then we go through what ifs self-sabotage and fears come in away right we're asked to be decisive this week whatever we are going towards be decisive get clear because this is about you trusting yourself too. This is about you listening to yourself. Maybe for once. And this is about following your own internal guidance. Because everything is working out the way it should. It's often in retrospect that we see that. But in the moment we're like, oh shit, I have no idea what to do. Should I leave school? Should I quit this job? Should I start this relationship? Should I do this and that? And we go into like a finagle of crap. Like a little tornado inside of us. So again... Take some time. We do see stillness here. We see solitary beings. Take some time to, uh, I would say, find your own energy, to be with your own energy, because that, that's where you're going to find the confirmation, the clarity, everything. Okay, I got some oracles. Let's see what other messages we need to know for this week. I'm going to try to keep this to 35 minutes, you all. I feel like this is my own goal here. What else does the universe want us to know for this week? Ooh, oh, this card flipped, you guys. <laughs> You're gonna crap in your pants. <laughs> Solitude, look at this. In silence, peace prevails. Oh my God, some of you connect with owls. We see maybe raven, crow, dragonfly, bat, owls. Look, there's a little baby owl here and an owl. This is about listening to your own internal wisdom. And this could be the scariest thing possible. When you're like, I have no idea how things are going to work out, but I trust and I know that this is the way I'm supposed to go. Again, whatever it is that you have been dreaming of, some of you I feel have so many amazing dreams, but we all hold ourselves back because we're humans. <laughs> and that's, that's the human nature, but... In the divine soul sense, there's no reason to hold ourselves back. And so really, again, you see these folks, they're all on their own contemplating, thinking, introspecting. It's like their own mini retrogrades. Take time this week amidst all this energy that's asking us to get ready to close doors, to move forward, to start anew. Take time to um, bring that own, your own closure or that closure to yourself. It's almost like, again, like that New Year's energy where people reflect what went wrong, what happened, what were the highlights of this year, what, what did I learn, etc. And then preparing yourself to start something new. It's difficult sometimes when people are like, yeah, whatever, I'm just going to start. But if you don't take enough time to review, sometimes you don't realize what is it that I learned? What is it that I want to continue? Especially if you're making shifts. And I feel like so many people are opting for renewed, revamped paths. They're changing a lot of their, I would say their, their paths because of changing value systems. And so that's huge. 
So that would entail some type of review. I lost the word, guys. I was like, review, what comes after review? But it's review, revamping, reorganizing. And so take time alone this week, especially since there's a lot of this Aries energy and uh, a lot of just with the equinox, with the sun ingressing into a new sign, with um, this new moon, there's a lot of a newness coming, a lot of starts. It's like revving up the engine when the engine didn't, didn't want to start in your car and all of a sudden you are shifting from smart mode because some cars, especially these newer cars, have different modes to economize the petro petroleum gas, right? They have smart mode where it's more fuel efficient and then they have sports mode. And I feel like we're shifting from smart mode to sports. So again, just be cautious uh, during this week. Solitude may be your best friend here. Nature too. There's a lot of, look at this. We have a lot of different climates here. We have greenery in the back. We have oceans, water, and we have mountains. So you all have your pick. Pick something this week that'll help you cleanse your energy, make you feel refreshed, but more importantly, and there's a lot of birds here, so there's a, a shitload of messages coming too. Do you see this? Birds are also harbingers and signs for messages. I would say positive omens. So again, solitude this week is going to be very helpful for, for many folks. What other messages do we need to know for this week, please? What else do we need to know? Thank you. I pulled from my unicorn, unicorn oracle. I felt this special invitation. We have 12, the freedom of truth. Communicate honestly, be who you truly are. King of Swords energy. <laughs> but again, like I mentioned, I won't get into it. This is a rainbow. Again, once you get clear on what you want, that's why this, the solitude is important. When you get rid of all the noise around you, it's not just the auditory noise. It's, it's people, places, things, distractions. And you just sit with yourself and you journal or you just simply think through things you're going to start realizing what you're being called to, what you're feeling excited about, what you're ready to leave. And so again, this is really uh, about honesty with the King of Swords, especially Queen of Swords as well, but King of Swords, this is about being brutally honest with yourself and with others. But again, more importantly with yourselves, so with the Aries energy, excuse me, when we look at it from that embodiment because it's speaking to the self and what it is that you are ready to to initiate. Finally, we have 31, Cosmic Emerald. Create perfect health. Access divine abundance. A lot of green energy. Before I do any of these, anytime I do any YouTube video actually, and particularly anything that's uh, live or with a healing session, I always call in my team and I work with Archangels a lot, especially Archangel Shamuel, Archangel Raphael. And I called them in today. I don't always call them in. So I feel like some of you may have a particularly strong connection to him or work with archetypes of healing, maybe mothering, mother nurturing. But I feel like for this week, some of you may be calling, being called towards path of self healing. It doesn't have to mean in the sense that many people think like you're sick, you have to heal. But it's healing your life in a way that is in touch and in tune with yourself. Because many of you, I feel, be who you truly are. You may identify as a weirdo. <laughs> I tend to connect with the weirdos because I identify as a weirdo as well. And I feel like it's just saying we beat to our own drum. We're different in that way. But there's a level two and a measure of authenticity of following your intuition. Uh, internal compass there's a strong sense of integrity there so some of you are being called to really listen to that voice within you this could be also an element of healing your inner child perhaps for many of you that have rejected parts of yourself growing up or that have been rejected by others and it's reflecting back to you am i ready to accept who i truly am with this healing energy some of you may want to meditate on this maybe you have green gems that's why i wear emeralds <laughs> I work a lot with this energy and it's incredibly healing. And that's why we have, 
I say nature a lot. Nature is green, <laughs> right? For many areas right now, it's turning green, but it doesn't matter if it's not because eternally nature has this healing energy and this vibration. So whenever you enter that sphere, you feel it. So take some time with this cosmic emerald and there's a green feather. Some of you are seeing feathers. This is about tapping into your mind, body, soul, those essences, getting ready to revamp your own personal holistic health in this new way. I'm getting a lot of youthful energy. Perhaps that's why I pulled the unicorn. <laughs> Unicorns always make me laugh and smile, make me feel like a little kid again. What other messages do we need to know for this week? We got two, including this one, two oracle cards left. Thank you. Okay. We got blame. I accept responsibility for my well being. And then we got doubt. I release the need to know all the answers. Some of this touches into Ceres retrograde in Virgo with the health aspect, right? It's, it's not just the physical body too, but it's also the mental body and spiritual body because there's a lot of confluence of energy here of listening to uh, your internal guiding system. That's your intuition speaking, the access to your psychic gifts and to your spiritual team. And I mentioned in another video I'll be posting, we all have, I like to call it our vault, but some people may say you could kind of relate it to Pandora's box, but a lot of people have negative connotations because if you know the mythology behind Pandora, it wasn't all positive, right? Because when you open that box, shit came out. <laughs> but we all have our own box here and a lot of this, this box's vault, our treasure chest, it holds ancient cosmic wisdom, guidance. And it allows us to access it at different points in, in our time as we continuously evolve as a spe as a, I was gonna say as a species, that too, but as a soul on, on this earth, as humans. And so I feel like right now this week, there, it's like a reality check week, assessing where we're at, what we're ready to take responsibility for, and how we're ready and where we're willing to grow in our lives. Because when we are ready to stop blaming everything else and just say, you know what, shit happened. But this is what I've learned. That's the most important thing, you guys, is knowing what did I learn from this? And we're like, okay, taking responsibility, moving forward, what can I do? And also knowing, you know what? Because this does, I feel, embody the Aries energy. Aries doesn't have to know all the answers. They learn along the way and they're not afraid to mis make a mistake. That's why it, it, makes that, uh, it makes them very courageous in a way. There is fear there, but they still do it because they're driven by their excitement, their ambition, by the desire to do whatever it is they have their mind set to, right? So release any doubts that you have of how, where is it? I kept getting it here. Release any doubt of how it is that you feel you're gonna get to your destination in life. Again, whether it's that perfect job you have in mind, a relationship, or the move, whatever, as long as you have it written, set down, and you, you have with clarity, you know what it is that you want to pursue. You just have to take the next step, micro step, not the whole step. So a lot, a lot of things could be coming up for you this week that could help you towards this path. Let's get a final Oracle card. <laughs> to close this out. What final message does the universe have for us? Thank you. It flew out. We have I, like, like the eye. <laughs> Eyes are the windows of the soul. I feel like this week, many of you are returning back home. You see that? It's kind of hard to see here. Some of you may want to try mirror work where you look at your eyes, like eye gazing, or even if you're in a partnership, look into your partner's eyes. It's extremely intimate. It's very deep. There's a lot you, you start to know and you get messages without saying a thing. And this could help you just connect to yourself. It's again, a greater form of intimacy. And so some of you, again, this week, I feel like you're call being called back home, back to your true state. Cause we have here the freedom of truth, communicate honestly, be, be who you truly are, crap. Do you see that? So pay attention to what you're feeling pulled to what 
you're finally ready to let go of. And I'm not even tapping into the emotional aspect of, yes, it could be hard, it's not always easy. That's the human element of it. We grieve, we process, we start anew. And I think if humans have done anything better or have been good at anything, it's been starting anew despite a lot of adversity. So I hope this reading resonated with someone. I hope this has given you all some nuggets to think through in your own lives and also to realize you guys have so much more power and control over your own lives than you realize. It's not about knowing all the answers. That's not what I mean, but it's really the power lies in listening to yourself and hearing your voice and following those nudges. That's where that true beauty, empowerment, and power comes from. And that's going to help you going forward. I feel like maybe I should change the title because I had the title of this week's reading. It's time. But I feel like in silence, peace prevails, but everything else prevails for you. Comment down below. Let me know if this reading has helped you, if it has resonated in any way. I know it's still early in the week. Maybe come back. Let me know how your week has gone this first new week in Aries. And with all of these events happening, I'd love to know what's happening for you. Thank you guys for being here. I'm wishing you a beautiful week ahead. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.